Welcome to today's class of analog microelectronic circuits. Uh, in yesterday's class, we were discussing about differential amplifier. We understood uh, in a differential amplifier, we talk about two uh, inputs. One is the differential input and another one is common mode input. After that, uh, we looked at uh, the development of a differential amplifier circuit by combining inverting and non-inverting amplifier. But one thing what we have done is, uh, we made sure that the gain provided by both the stages are equal. For that we added two additional resistors that you can see in red color here R3 and R4 and later we also enforced a condition uh, to make the non-inverting gain equal to R2 by R1 that is by keeping R3 by R4 equal to R1 by R2 right so after that uh, what we have done is we uh, obtained the final uh, differential gain for a differential amplifier which is R2 by R1 into VID and with that uh, we yeah we also uh, arrive, uh, obtain the expression for common mode gain and under matched conditions when the, uh, if the uh, if the resistor values are exactly equal that is when your r3 is equal to uh, r1 and r4 is equal to r2 uh, then common mode value will be equal to zero otherwise the common mode value will exist so any mismatch in resistance can give a non zero uh, common mode gain which can lead to a finite cmrr or a low value of cmrr and apart from that what we discussed is we also obtained the input impedance of the circuit and input impedance value is R1 plus R3 or under matched condition you can think about it as uh, 2R1. Now uh, if we uh, take it as 2R1 uh, and then we look at the differential gain formula what we have seen is there is a uh, trade off or there is a compromise of what we are doing uh, that is if you are looking for a higher input resistance the differential gain will be smaller or if you are looking for a a uh, higher uh, differential gain the input resistance will be smaller but we know that at least for the uh, op amp uh, at least for a normal voltage amplifier uh, scenario what we look is always for a high input impedance and a uh, high differential gain and combining these two features is not possible in this configuration of differential amplifier what we have discussed so now uh, in yesterday's class we stated that uh, we will be looking for an amplifier circuit which can provide both high input impedance and high differential gain right and such a circuit there are many circuits in that uh, we will be discussing only one of that category and that circuit is called as instrumentation amplifier because it is typically used for all, in, all instrumentation applications right so when we move to this instrumentation amplifier the key things what we should have in our mind is uh, one thing is we are looking for an amplifier which is having uh, high gain so let me just uh, list out the the previous uh, disadvantages right so when we move from one circuit to another circuit now uh, we will look for some some kind of improvement right so let me write out the disadvantages of a normal differential amplifier what we have discussed in our class in the previous class uh, so, so can you just let me um, can you ping in the uh, chat box which are the, what are the major disadvantages what we discussed and today also I listed it. What are two main drawbacks of the differential amplifier circuit we discussed? Please use the chat box. Any response? I'm asking about, yeah, uh, yeah, there is a trade off problem related to the Z, correct. So the differential amplifier, yeah. uh, low input impedance which is 1 and the second one is the trade off between uh, differential gain and RN, trade off these things right. So uh, keeping this in mind and when we move towards uh, uh, another structure or another uh, circuit. Mm, one thing is we need to uh, we need to focus to improve your input impedance right so if you remember when we discussed about inverting and non-inverting amplifier in inverting amplifier we saw that the input impedance will be directly the resistance connected at the input side which is equal to r1 right so let me draw that here uh, this is your inverting amplifier configuration right now your non-inverting amplifier is something like this where you will be directly providing a uh, signal to the plus input and 
right this is a non inverting configuration and one thing what we noticed is in inverting amplifier you have a finite input impedance and that input impedance is di uh, exactly or directly this resistance connected here but in the case of non inverting amplifier the input impedance will be infinity because we are looking at this positive terminal and there we are um, looking into the op amp there is no input current so your input impedance will be naturally it will be very high so uh, when we move from this differential amplifier to another amplifier uh, in in our case which is differential amplifier one thing what we notice is we have to improve the input impedance and if you want to improve input impedance we have to bring in this kind of configuration right so what i am do now is i am not going to uh, totally uh, come up with another new circuit rather i'll be keeping the same differential amplifier circuit as reference this is the circuit what we have discussed so this is the circuit what we have discussed and uh, we mark this as r3 r4 and this as r1 and r2 right this is a circuit but we now we know that this circuit is having some uh, some trade off or some disadvantages one is input impedance so we need to rectify that the very first thing we need to rectify is we need to work to improve the input impedance now with this existing circuit whatever i do i need to uh, rely upon the uh, resistance what i directly connect to improve the input impedance so that is not an option here i need to uh, add or i need to bring something extra in order to make the input impedance so high the second thing is uh, since there is a direct trade off between these two i will not venture to in increase input resistance and make the differential gain very low that also i cannot do so one uh, one solution to this is i can actually think about one more stage of amplifier uh, and i will add that stage of amplifier in prior to this differential amplifier that means i'll consider this as second stage i'll consider this as second stage and i will add another stage of stage circuit here as first stage where the input impedance problem can be resolved with that moreover when you have two stages the gain of the um, entire amplifier will be the cascade of these two basically multiplication of the gain of these two stages that is our uh, the primary the, that is our first step moving towards improving input impedance and coming out from the trade off of differential gain and input impedance are you guys with me can i get some yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah please respond in the chat so what i will do here is um, i want to add a, another stage uh, before this second stage or before this differential amplifier now mm, if i start with that stage again an inverting amplifier i will be uh, totally depending on this mm, uh, resistance value for the input impedance so what i will do is i'll start with a non inverting amplifier plus minus this becomes one input and this is one non inverting amplifier this terminal should be grounded and similarly so this is for uh, providing vi1 see previously vi1 was here now i am shifting that vi1 from this point to another uh, the previous state the input to the previous stage now i am making this as say uh, yeah let me use some other convention similarly i am adding one more amplifier one more op amp here where the same marking minus plus this is vi2 and here i should have this feedback resistance and this resistance connected to ground right now <clears throat> if you look at the previous circuit what we had uh this is the point where we are getting the differential input right this is the point where we have the differential input what we marked as vid vi1 minus vi2 is nothing but vid so uh, just for the convention sake what i will do is i'll be um, connecting i'll be calling this as vid1 and this as vid2 now this differential input is not directly coming from yeah 
Now this differential input is not directly coming from the input source, rather it is coming from the previous stage. So what I should do, I should connect from here to this VID1 and I need to connect from this point to this VID2. Right. So <clears throat> now just to make this circuit complete, what I am doing is, uh, see we know that R3 and R4 and this R1 and R2 should be equal to R3 and R4, right? So I am just editing or uh, renaming these as uh, so this is R, R1 should be equal to R3 and this should be equal to R4. This is what our need is right? Uh, for the previous circuit. Now I am using those resistor values here. So this should be equal to R2, this should be equal to R1, this is R2, this is equal to R1. Now you have three op amps here. Let me call this, uh, this is the first op amp, second op amp and this is the third op amp. Right. So here you can clearly see there are two stages. This is first stage and this is second stage. So by doing this, what are the additional benefits we, we have? What are the additional benefits? Because by adding this, one thing, uh, there are two things we um, improved here. We shifted the input to the non-inverting input so that uh, your non-inverting input will offer a high input impedance, first thing. Second thing is, the complete gain is not really depending on the gain of this stage. See, whatever value we take for R3 and R4, that is perfectly fine because that gain is getting multiplied with the previous gain stage, right? So, uh, let us see, let us write the gain expression first. So, the output of first stage will give some gain, right? So, what is the gain at this point? This is a non-inverting configuration. So, gain at this point will be 1 plus R2 by R1 into vi1 is a gain at this point or vid1 can be think or the output of first stage here uh, at the upper arm it is 1 plus r2 by r1 into vi1 similarly at the lower arm it is again 1 plus r2 by r1 into vi2 right that means first stage is giving you a gain of 1 plus r2 by r1 and that is presented to the second stage input that is the point where we marked as vid1 and vid2 now what is the gain of the second stage? Second stage gain is simple as we have uh, written second stage gain will be the um, you can write in two ways. One thing is I can write it as R4 by R3. Previously we wrote it as R2 by R1. Now I am making that value equal to R3 and R4. So it is R4 by R3 into VID2 minus VID1. I can write in this way or if I want to write in terms of the original input I can write it as R4 by R3 into 1 plus R2 by R1 into VI2 minus VI1. In both ways you can express the gain. right? So the differential gain for this stage can be written as this complete uh, amplifier can be written as R4 by R3 into 1 plus R2 by R1. right? Now what is the advantage of this circuit? In comparison with the previous circuit what we have done is here we have um, here the dependency of the input impedance on the gain is totally not there right because your input is connected to uh, this the non-inverting input terminals where the input impedance becomes infinity naturally and the differential gain is r4 by r3 into 1 plus r2 by r1 it is um, there are two stages gain we are multiplying thereby you will get a larger gain moreover there is no dependency on the input input circuit input impedance itself right is this clear can i get some response in the chat All right. So if I if I am concluding or if I am uh, summarizing the features of this, by the way, this this is called as this is identified as an instrumentation amplifier for the reason that it is having all the features uh, required for a for instrumentation purpose. R4 right so what are the features one feature is uh, input impedance right high input impedance Rm that is one very important feature the second feature is your differential gain is also high differential gain is equal to R4 by R3 into 1 plus R2 by R1 that is also high pretty high and the third feature is <coughs> Uh, still uh, what will be the common mode gain common mode gain definitely common mode gain will be 
no I, i'm not talking about the magnitude but differencing action will still happen in the second stage and uh, you you can make common mode gain as low as possible right but there are few challenges we'll discuss that right but anyway the previous two disadvantages what we focused can be removed from the circuit and therefore we can actually use this amplifier configuration for high input impedance as well as for high gain all right but um, see um, whenever we learn circuits no it is not it is for every circuit there will be uh, some kind of um, uh, problems will be there and that is the uh, the whole point where we come up with a totally new circuit or some uh, the, some techniques to improve the the faults uh, with the uh the first the, the, the circuit what we discuss in beginning uh yes so yeah sanket is having a question uh, will cascading effect a uh, bandwidth of the net amplifier descend yeah um yeah sanket definitely there is a concern over that but um, one important thing what we need to notice here is uh, what we we are using op amps here so usually compensated op amps will not have such large bandwidth that is one thing second thing is since this amplifier is um, designed for instrumentation purposes uh, so if you look at the signals uh, typically if you look at the signals uh, biomedical signals all are in low in hertz range right so those signals are available in hertz range so um, using these uh, uh, these op amps or this as a, the whole instrumentation amplifier for such applications will not be a challenge because Uh, typically all the biomedical signals or physiological signals are in hertz range right so if we, if if we can get a bandwidth up to few kilohertz range um, in the with compensated um, bandwidth then that should be uh, good enough for these kind of applications i'm talking mainly is that clear sanket all right yeah now let us uh, look at some of the um, Uh, the points about this uh, this architecture also because um, one second yeah uh, let me discuss about few drawbacks of this circuit yeah so the one thing is see we can see that there are two stages here right there are two stages there is first stage and second stage now <coughs> um second stage is actually a differential amplifier also so it can actually deal with um, common mode noise and it can reject it that is well it can do that but one problem here is uh, you look at this no uh, the, there is a first stage and whenever there is a common signal coming uh, the very first thing is uh, the input stage you know that we have uh, two separate um, amplifiers so there is no uh, there is no connection between this connection in the sense yeah you can see that these two ground points are uh, these two are shorted but still uh, this will take this is not a, um, this is not exactly receiving a differential signal it is this is receiving a single ended signal this is receiving another single ended signal as two different circuits and it is processing it right now even though the second is a fully differential amplifier it can work on the common mode noise but the common mode signal which is present here at the first stage will be amplified by the amplifiers a1 and a2 and that will be present to the to the differential amplifier right so for the second stage it is still a lot more challenge to reject the common mode signal because the that signal is already amplified by the first stage right why i am telling is because the a1 amplifier set is working independently a2 is amplifier set is working independently and both are receiving uh, single ended signals and if there are any noise signals with that there is no cancellation in that in the first stage itself so the those common mode signals will be amplified and that will be presented to the differential amplifier so uh, the second stage has to work lot in the sense the second stage should uh, will be receiving an amplified common mode signal which has to be rejected by the second stage which is still more a challenge for the second stage right so i'll just write down that here vcm the any common mode signal um, is amplified by first stage is amplified by uh, first stage and now the second stage which is basically differential amplifier and the second stage amplifier has to deal with that
much higher VCM for rejection. Right. So basically, we need to we need to have a, a very very good common mode rejection ratio. So here the focus point is CMRR, common mode rejection ratio. That is one one uh, disadvantage or one challenge from this circuit. The second thing is you can see that. Uh, in the first stage, there are two amplifiers, right? Amplifier A1 and amplifier A2, and those two are working as two separate channels, right? So A1 is uh, one amplifier. Uh, there are two amplifier channels in the first stage, and these has to be perfectly matched, right? These two channels has to be perfectly matched. When I say perfectly matched, VA1 is received at this point, VA2 is received at this point. Uh, if these two channels are perfectly matched, the signals presented to the second stage are also um, perfectly matched right otherwise unwanted signals may appear at this point right so what I'm trying to say here is uh, see the resistors R2 and R1 here and R2 and R1 here so there is no a common point where you can tune the gain of the first stage because those two amplifiers are acting as two separate channels so in that case if there are any mismatch mis not mismatch yeah we are talking about the mismatches but if the two channels are not amplifying the signal in a com in a in a in an appropriate way or in an equal way, then that will definitely give rise to some more signals because unwanted signals can definitely come in or ultimately it will again lead to some more noise or other signals. So the point here is the two amplifier uh, channels in the first stage. two amplifier channels in the first stage has to be perfectly matched otherwise unwanted signals may appear because this is not working as a um, these two amplifiers are not working this, this is not a differential amplifier as such rather there are two different channels there right so that is a challenge mm, we will see how to resolve it first it has to be perfectly matched otherwise unwanted signals uh, may appear which will be further amplified by the second stage Right. This is another important thing and the last thing is see, see this is a differential uh, gain uh, expression right now say for example you want to vary the differential gain now the differential gain depends on R4, R3, R2 and R1 now if you look at R2 and R1 uh, R2 and R1 are actually uh, the same R2 and R1 should, should be there for both the amplifier channels otherwise the same issue will uh, again come up right if we are not able to and it is true that we will not be able to match uh, the resistors R1 and R2 for two different channels right so that can also uh, lead to a proper gain setting all right so to vary differential gain AD um, the two resistors which are the two resistors R2 and R1 has to be varied simultaneously This has to be varied simultaneously that will still present another challenge because uh, resistor should be perfectly matched if you want to do that right that is for uh, um, for each gain setting this should happen Right, so uh, mismatches in resistors will be a troublesome. Are you guys with me uh, while discussing this uh, drawbacks of this circuit? Can I get some response in the chat? So if you look at the uh, look at the circuit, you will uh, get to know that. Yeah, so you'll get to know that uh, your common mode rejection will be an issue because the first stage is not a differential uh, stage as such 
and then since it is not a differential stage we have the other problems like uh, resistor should be perfectly matched to uh, to have a common uh, to um, vary the differential gain or even uh, some un unwanted signals also can appear at the output of first stage because if the channels are not amplifying the signals equally that can result in some other uh, undesired response right so these are the problems so see what we have done is we initially we had this differential amplifier this is a differential amplifier structure now to this differential amplifier we added this part to work basically on two problems one problem is low input impedance which is rectified another problem is differential gain that is also the trade off that is also rectified now uh, the problem here now is now we have to uh, address or now we have to see, now we can see that um, the two separate amplifier channels in the first stage is creating a lot of problem or there is no commonality between that right so for that reason we have to uh, modify this circuit and the modification is done uh, a very simple slight modification can actually uh, result in a better circuit and i'll be presenting that modification the modification is nothing but instead of uh, connecting or uh, instead of using these two are two separate amplifier stages what we will do is the uh, both r1 and r see there are two r1s here right these two r1s will be replaced by a single r1 and that will be connected between this point this point between r2 and r2 uh, and this r1 will actually facilitate as a single resistor which will give you uh, a control over the differential gain which will also give uh, which will also make the first stage as a complete differential stage all right so i will present that circuit now yeah these are the points what i have written sorry so let me just take up the circuit and do that modification So what we'll do is we'll be connecting the resistance R1 from this point to this point, and this is your R1 now, right? So this simple uh, change in the circuit made the first stage also as a differential stage because the signal is not uh, now the now how we are applying the signal. We are actually applying the signal in this fashion. like this we'll be applying the signal say this is vi1 and this is vi2 but the input signal is also presented as a fully differential signal like this maybe you can call, think of think about this as minus plus or plus minus all right so now can you uh, tell me what is the differential gain of this after making this modification let all the other points remain uh, just do a slight modification here I'll be presenting this as yeah just to differentiate between both the circuits and just marking this as the output of first stage and this as the final output v naught right <clears throat> so now uh, what i need to uh, write here is i want to know what is vo2 and vo1 uh, but it is slightly different from what we have seen before right because uh, before we have seen that uh, the vo1 and vo2 or I'll refer to the previous VID1 and VID2, which is presented to the first stage, is coming from two separate channels. But now the channel is not separate. We have made the resistance common. R1 is common in between there. So now, in order to write this, what I will do is uh, let me uh, look at the current which is flowing here. Uh, I can think about a current which is flowing in this way. Right. Or one second. Let me in order to write this. This these two points. 
and I'll take these two points as well. Uh, these two, this point is VO1. I think the color is not good. I'll change the color. Yeah. This point is VO1 and this point is VO2. And can you tell me what are these two voltages? What will be this node voltage? Can I get some response in the chat? This is a non-inverting amplifier. What will be this node voltage? Are you guys there? Assume that A1 is infinity. A1 and A2, the open loop gain is infinity. Yes, if this is infinity, this will have the same potential as of this. So this will be at VI1, this will be at VI2. Right. Now, uh, so as considering VI2 as the positive potential, so can I write like this VI2, this node potential? minus vi1 the difference will produce a current here that current is r1 let me write that current as i the difference in this voltage is vi1 and vi2 sorry vi2 minus vi1 divided by this resistance r1 that will give a current right now whatever current we are marking here or whatever current flowing through r1 that is not actually coming from here it is not coming from here it is not coming from the input terminal of the op amp right? so that has to come from here only and that, that cannot flow into this op-amp, that has to flow through R2 only, right. Now, the same current can also be written as VO2, VO2 is this node voltage, because the current is flowing through this path, right, the, the current flowing through all the three resistors are same, so this current can be written as VI2 minus VI1 divided by R1, it is equal to VO2 minus VO1 divided by what? VO2 minus VO1 divided by, what is the denominator term here? It is only R2, VO2 is here, VO1 is here, so the current flowing through the uh, flowing through these three resistors are equal. So this difference divided by what? What is the denominator? Yes, 2R2 plus R1, this is the current flowing here, right. So can we write like this? So through this what I got here is the relationship between the the input of the first stage and output of the first stage. So I can write this as VO2 minus VO1 divided by VI2 minus VI1 is equal to 2R2 plus R1 divided by R1, right. So this can be written as the gain of first stage. Now uh, if I want to write V out, so V out is what? Let me write V out here. Now how can I write V out? V out can be written as the what is the gain of second stage? Gain of second stage is just R4 by R3. So it is R4 by R3 into right. So V out divided by uh, VO2 minus VO1 is equal to R4 by R3. Or when I write this as V out divided by V i2 minus V i1 which is the differential gain of the entire uh, amplifier that is equal to R4 by R3 into 2 R2 plus R1 divided by R1. This is the differential gain of first stage. Alright. So any questions on this what I have done? And this circuit is the very popular 3 op amp instrumentation amplifier but after this also there are lot many uh, uh, new topologies has come up which is having uh, more features than this 3, three op amp instrumentation amplifier right but this is a very popular one that is why uh, we are um, covering this in our course Alright, so 
yeah so now in the previous case we listed few disadvantages right the disadvantages mainly lied upon the uh, the two did separate channels of the first stage amplifier but now that is rectified by uh, removing the ground or the short and by replacing the resistance r1 and two r1s by a single r1 that made the first that made the first stage also a differential one and thereby uh, we are having still higher gain uh, for the complete amplifier we still have higher gain and input impedance right so if you write the features of this these this amplifier still the amplifier is having the features what we listed before as high input impedance and high gain moreover this is not having that many uh, common mode issues as the previous circuit what we have seen all right so this is all about instrumentation amplifier and um, we'll if you have any questions you can ask now we'll have uh, i'll clarify them those and we'll come back